Hello and welcome to this, the uh, fifth event in a week of lectures and webinars to mark the 40th anniversary of the IGS. In this week, we're showcasing great thinking and insights from IGS members around the world and also giving you the opportunity to quiz the IGS officers and IGS members on activities and thinking from the IGS. My name is John Krauss and I am Executive Director. Please note that today's event is being recorded so that we can share with members who are unable to make it to the live session. It's my pleasure today to introduce Dr. Hua Bei Liu. Hua Bei has been carrying out research on geosynthetic reinforced soil technology for more than 20 years and has been an active member of IGS since 2009, and he's a serving member of the IGS Council. Hua Bei's research areas cover soil geosynthetic interaction, long-term response to reinforced soil structures, and dynamic behavior of reinforced soil structures. Dr. Liu has taught soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering at Tsinghua University, City College in New York, and Hua Zhong University of Science and Technology, HUST. Currently, he is a professor and the Dean of Civil Engineering at HUST. He also serves as a board member of the China Technological Association of Geosynthetics, a committee member of TC218 on reinforced film materials of the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering, that's the ISSMGE. And he serves on the editorial boards of four refereed journals. Dr. Liu is going to present on the history, manufacturing and applications of geosynthetics in China. If you have any questions or comments, please use the Q&A function, and I'll put them to Dr. Liu at the end of his presentation. Hua Bei, welcome, okay. and over to okay. you. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you very much, John. Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the friends from around the, the world. On behalf of China Technical Association of Geosynthetics and the Chinese chapter of IGS, uh, I will be presenting this lecture to the celebrate the 40th anniversary of IGS. The title of my lecture, uh, as John introduced, was Geosynthetic in China, History, Manufacturing and Applications. And part of this lecture was given by Dr. Zhou, uh, who, was, who right now is the president of CTIG during the 12th ICG in Rome. Here's the outline of my presentation today. First of all, let's take a look at the geosynthetic history in China. Uh, although geosynthetic is a relatively new term in China, reinforced soil technology has, was used more than 4,000 years ago in the ancient Liangshu city to construct earth stems and levees. Uh, this over here gives you the, the, the map of this uh, ancient uh, Liangshu city. This is the city over here. All this uh, black uh, color, uh, this black indicated the levees and dams constructed at a time to protect the city. And over here on the right hand side, you can see the cross-section of these levees and dams, and you can see clearly that the uh, reinforced soil was used actually. Uh, the technology used was similar to the uh, modern day geotube. Uh, uh, but a uh, third grass over here, you can see that this actually is some duplication of this technology uh, several years ago in, in China. Uh, the, the, this set grass was used to wrap the clay, while bamboo strip was used as hoop uh, reinforcement to strengthen the materials and to make a reserve tube. You can see over here, this is the uh, bamboo uh, strip. <clears throat> of course, we all know that the uh, reinforcement technology was used to construct the uh, Great Wall more than 2,000 years ago. This was a section of a uh, Han Great Wall in Lingxia, uh, which is more than 2,000 years old. Uh, <clears throat> However, modern day uh, geosynthetic came to China in mid 1960s. In late 1970s, all of the textile were used for separation and filtration in riverbank protection and in railway subways. Over here, I give you two examples. One, it was constructed in 1981. As you can see here, this the geosynthetic textile layer used as separation. Uh, and over here, you have a, a geotextile reinforced cushion uh, uh, to reinforce the ground together with sand piles over here. And, and this is actually a railway embankment. Uh, the first use synthetic reinforced soil retaining wall was constructed in 1979, and plastic vertical vents were firstly used in Tianjin in 1981. And in 1986, the first uh, national conference of geotextile was held in Tianjin. And Manufacturing of textiles started in the late 1970s, 
And geosynthetic uh, manufacturing picked up its momentum in 1980s following fast growing applications. In 1990s, full range of geosynthetic products by uh, domestic manufacturers can be found in the market. And from 1989 to 1995, the amount of geotextile and geomembrane used was about 100 to 150 million square meter. Uh, this gives you some examples of the application of geosynthetic in, uh, in the last century. Oh, I'd like to emphasize one thing. In 1998, uh, I think some of you may know that there was a very uh, heavy flood in, in, in uh, Yangtze River, and many places along Yangtze River was actually flooded. And uh, uh, geosynthetic played a very uh, critical role uh, at the time, and lots of levees were actually protected by geosynthetic products. Because of this, actually in 1999, the central government of China issued a notice and set up a coordination team of ministries, you can see actually lots of ministries, to promote the application of this synthetic in mainland China. Uh, and in order to promote the technology, actually, uh, GCTAG published uh, several books in the last century. Uh, I would like to point out, uh, I raise your attention to this book. This was actually published in 1987. It was the first one on properties and testing of geosynthetic in China. In terms of uh, international collaboration, it started as early as 1986. Uh, in 1986, a delegate of three uh, representatives attended the third ICG in Vienna. After that, in 1990 and in 1994, we have a representative from China as well, and we presented uh, more than 20 papers over there. And in two, year 2000, the first China International Geosynthetic Conference was held in Shanghai. I would like to raise your attention over here again that Dr. J.P. Zhao actually visited China in November 2000. And now let's move on to the second part. I would like to develop, uh, discuss a little bit about the development background of geosynthetic in China. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in recent years, China's geosynthetic production scale and application level has made great process progress, China has become the country with the world's largest geosynthetic product types, the largest output, and the fastest uh, growing speed. Now, China's geosynthetic industry is entering a new stage of com comprehensive development. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the main sectors that apply geosynthetic in their projects. First of all, railway. By the end of 2022, China railway operating mileage was uh, 155,000 kilometers of which 42,000 kilometers were actually high-speed railway. This gives you uh, the various types of geosynthetic used in different application scenarios and railways. You can see that here that uh, geosynthetic uh, was, is used in different uh, components of a railway uh, from uh, subgrade track to tunnel. And the application scenarios uh, range from ground treatment to reinforcement and to like water pro uh, proofing and drainage. And, we can see over here that almost all types of geosynthetic were used in uh, the railway industry. Uh, for highway, uh, by the end of uh, 2022, uh, 20, 20, uh, China's highway mileage was more than 5 million kilometers, of which uh, around 177,000 kilometers were expressway. Uh, this again give you uh, the application scenarios of geosynthetic in, in different applications in, uh, in highway. Again, uh, geosynthetic is used in different components of the, uh, this highway, subgrade, pavement, tunnel. And you can see over here we have different uh, application scenarios from uh, reinforcement, ground, ground treatment, uh, all the way to crack control and so on and so forth. And then again, uh, almost all types of uh, uh, geosynthetic was used in the uh, highway industry. Now in airport, uh, in airport, uh, it, the number of airports in China in 2022 was about 254, an increase of 25 from year 2017. Application of geosynthetic in airport project mostly consists of soil enforcement and soil separation. In the environmental uh, protection tech sector, uh, the, uh, by the end of 2022, the operating expense of China's environmental protection industry is about uh, 2,000 billion yen. The uh, operating uh, expense was twice the, of 2016. In order just to give you some uh, idea about the scale of 
this uh, environmental protection expense. Uh, China has over uh, 20,000 existing landfill sites for MSW. It poses a uh, serious threat to the environmental quality and ecological safety. And there's a significant and widespread presence of industrial solid waste landfills in China as well. Uh, in the sector of water conservancy and hydropower, uh, by the end of the uh, year 2022, China has over uh, has started 25,000 new water conservancy projects. Uh, this is a number uh, that is four, more than 4,000 uh, than that in 2021. The cumulative implementation of water conservancy projects is up to 41,000, uh, 1 1.3 times of that in uh, 2021. At the end, at, at, at the, the scale of new investment was about uh, 1.23 trillion yuan, uh, nearly 700 billion yuan more than that in 2021. The main application of your study in the sector of water conservancy and power includes uh, CPS prevention, uh, drainage and filtration, and protection of offshore and river banks. Now let's move on to the third part, uh, this industry overview. Uh, <clears throat> there are over 1,000 using city manufacturing enterprises in China, over 1,000, and uh, mainly distributed in uh, Shandong, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Hubei, Guangdong province, and Hebei provinces, as you can see from this map over here. Uh, in 2022, the output of geotextile exceeded uh, 1.5 million tons, and the output of your membrane exceeded 1.2 million tons. Uh, for geogrid, it was uh, 0 0.8 million tons. It is expected that the output of various types of geosynthetic will increase significantly uh, in 2023. By 2022, uh, <clears throat> there were more than 300 geotextile production lines. I think production line actually also give you uh, some idea about the scale of this uh, the, uh, of Chinese uh, production. Uh, uh, and for geogrid, this number is about 280. Uh, and there's more than 200 geomembrane production lines in China. In the field of transportation, water conservancy, and hydropower, uh, geogrids and geotextiles are widely used. In the field of environmental, pro environmental protection, uh, geomembranes are widely used. Uh, China have actually uh, set up a organization to, to actually promote the application of uh, 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 manufacturing application of geosynthetic geos geos uh, this, uh, this organization is the China Technic Not Technical Association on Geosynthetics, CTAG. This, uh, this organization was established in 1984, actually just one year after the establishment of IGS. It is a, a national level industry uh, association it's the only national organization in China that in, is engaged in geosynthetic product development, manufacturing, testing, theoretical research, standard pre preparation, technological in innovation, technical consultation, engineering application, and business training. Uh, the, this uh, CGIG has six specialized committees, five working committees, and six uh, secretariat uh, departments. Uh, at present, the number the member number of CTAG members exceeded about exceeds about six hundred. Uh, among these six hundred, more than about four hundred twenty uh, are actually corporate and institution members. The members covered uh, the whole industrial chain, such as manufacturing enterprises, inspection and testing enterprises, design and development units, research institutes and universities. Distributed in over twenty eight uh, in twenty eight provinces and cities across the country. Uh, in order to, in terms of, uh, in order to for this market, in order to uh, promote the market management, CTIG has set up a working committee on market management and advancement. The objective is to fully mobilize the initiative of industrial and industry and standardize the management of market behavior. In terms of market news and promotion, 
CDAG uh, actively collects and summarizes information, industrial policies, industrial standards, industrial activities, and other aspects, and inter interpret national guidelines and policies. Uh, actually, one of the important things that we did over here in CDAG is to interpret the uh, national uh, policy on uh, carbon uh, neutral uh, and also carbon uh, control. Uh, in terms of uh, operation statistic analysis, we, uh, the CTAG actively carry out statistical analysis of geosynthetic product uh, prices and provide references for railway and highway industry and member units. Uh, actually, if you can see over to just now, uh, the, the, the statistic I think I, uh, I, I used just now actually was collected by CTAG. The first part is about product manufacturing. Uh, the main type of geosynthetic product in China are geotextiles, geomembrane, geogrease, geocells, geonets, geonet materials, different types of course, waterproofing materials and geoforms, uh, and so on and so forth. Basically, it covers all, uh, I think, all, all kinds of products that you can find in the market in the world. These are basically some of the representative manufacturing enterprises in China. These are the big forms. Currently, there are more than uh, there are seventy eight product standards for geosynthetic products, uh, including twenty six national standards uh, and fifty two industrial or trade standards. These are all for uh, national for the products only. We also have uh, the standards for other uh, kind of thing, uh, as you can see later on. Uh, <clears throat> the most Chinese manufacturers are very strict in terms of quality control and quality assurance. Uh, this actually give you the flow of uh, QAC and QA. Uh, the, uh, it starts with uh, raw material testing, and then uh, it, 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 there is a, is a very strict process control and product uh, quality control. Of course, there's a feedback uh, mechanism uh, in between. And after that, uh, we have these different kind of quick test and application study test, and then there's a checking and uh, an analysis procedure. Uh, uh, the China Railway Test Certification Center Limited, which is CRCC, it was specialized in the implementation of implementation of geosynthetic product certification in the railway industry. We are also trying to do this for other sectors as well. Uh, this is for railway industry, and we are doing that, uh, trying to do that for highway, for water conservancy and hydropower sectors, and also for environmental protection sectors. Various type of tests are actually required, including hydraulic, uh, physical, and mechanical property tests, uh, hydraulic performance tests, and also durability tests. Uh, these tests are, are there to ensure that our product meets the standards. Uh, the in terms of pro, uh, the specialized committee on product testing of CTIG has also organized many testing ability comparison of geosynthetic among the broad trees to improve their testing levels. Uh, for product testing standards, um, currently we have about 22 national standards and 12 industrial and trade standards. Now let's move on to engineering applications. Uh, in order to promote this engineering application of geosynthetics, uh, we all, the, the, the central government and also CTH also, also uh, hold some uh, technical standards. Right now, we have one national standards, which is the technical code for application of geosynthetics, as you can see over here. And then we have nine industrial and trade standards for these different kind of purposes as well. And we published two uh, technical guides uh, uh, recently. One is on using saving fossil structure application, and the other one is on design and construction for geosynthetic seepage control and filtration. And over here, I'm going to give you just a few projects that uh, use Chinese products. Uh, uh, this is the project. Uh, it's a produced day project uh, in Montenegro, uh, but it actually uses the Chinese product. Uh, this Montenegro uh, North South Expressway is the first expressway in Montenegro with a maximum height of about 31 meter and a slope of about 
is 86 degrees. Uh, the the uh, uniaxial plastic geoways are used as a reinforcement. In actual geogrid, HDPE geogrids were used to construct the embankment retaining wall for the Chengdu Kuming Railway in 2018. The height of the wall is about 27.5 meters, and five types of facing were used in this project. Uh, next presentation is Qingdao Zhongcheng Intercity Railway Reinforcer Retaining Wall, which is located in Shandong Province, China. It is the first high-speed railway reinforcer retaining wall in China, actually. And the wall adopts uh, two types of facing. Uh, one is segmental concrete, concrete blocks and also uh, casting place uh, concrete slab together with wraparound facing. Uh, the slope angle of this the wall uh, are actually 87 and 70 degrees, respectively. The GIS wall at Shenlongjia Airport in Hubei Province is 50 meter high with an attitude of about two, uh, 2,580 meter. And uh, in this project, the terror mass system is used. You can see over here. This is, uh, this is another photo. Another application case located in Sichuan province, China. Uh, the hydraulic electric dam, this actually is a rockfield dam, is about 240 meter high. And it actually was in a, it is in a uh, earthquake active area. So uh, in order to improve the seismic performance, uh, this project uses high strength rock, uh, warp needed for the extra degrees to re, uh, in, in the dam. I can see uh, from this figure, this the filling material is not the standard type of filling material that we use uh, in, your, in, in reversal slope or in reversal walls. It's basically uh, rock fill materials, okay, as you can see over here. As you can see over here. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the next project is about water conservancy. Uh, this is a 800 meter long cage of Qingchao Sa Reservoir at the estuary of the Yangtze River. This is a protected by geotube made of high strength geotile textile. You can see from here, this is a geotube. It's made of high strength of textile. And I think this is the, the, the geotip under construction. You can see over here in this figure as well. Uh, the next pro the project uh, application is the, uh, the geosynthetic barrier and drainage system used in the upper storage reservoir of Taiang Pump Storage Power Station. In this project, your membranes and your max, uh, your membranes, and these are your max were used in this project to adopt to the large deformation of the subsoil, which save about 32 million, 32 million RMB in cost and shorten construction period for five months. This is an application for environmental protection it is in Hubei province, basically where I'm, I, I am right now. Uh, it's a Hubei Dongfang Environmental Pro uh, Protection uh, Hazardous Waste Treatment Plan. It has a total area of over 42,000 square meters, and the project atops your membranes uh, to prevent seepage. This is another project. Uh, is a reconstruction of barrier systems in Zijing Sun Copper Mine. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, here, uh, this is a the cross section of this uh, the the the, the uh, liner. Uh, the, in the, the liner system, we, we use your membranes, your textile, and GCL as well. You can see from this uh, over here. And after the uh, project is completed, uh, the system has been running very steadily, steadily and efficiently. And uh, the groundwater remains basically uncontaminated. Thank you. And now let's move on to the research, uh, innovation, and education. Uh, in terms of academic research, I think it's, it's a, a good uh, indicator of the activities of research uh, in this area is to take a look at uh, two things. One thing is patents. Uh, the, uh, it, the number of patents in 2022 is about twice of the number of patents in 2018. And if you take a look at the number over here, from 2018 to 2022, just for uh, geotextile, 
uh, there are more than 4,000 uh, patents. Uh, is it, uh, accounting for about 50% of 50% of the patents of art. Uh, and you, you can see from this figure over here, uh, uh, the uh, patents of geostactile is the maximum. And also we have um, geomembrane and geogrid, geocell and geonet and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, another indicator would be uh, papers uh, in these uh, international journals. Uh, I mean, I'm going to present just the papers by the Chinese author in two uh, main journals. One is the journal, the geotextiles, your membranes. Uh, and you can see in 2018, the, the, authors, the, the papers by the Chinese authors, uh, the percentage about 21%. And, but this number increases to uh, about 51% in 2022. Another journal uh, that will be the Geosynthetic International. Uh, uh, you can see that the, num the number of papers by the Chinese authors uh, was only about 11.6% in 2018. And in uh, the 2022, uh, this number increased to 38.1%. And now uh, we also, the Chinese community also uh, put a lot of efforts into the new product uh, development. Uh, over here, I'm going to just give you a few examples. Uh, the first example is this one, so-called uh, bio, bio convex three-dimensional vegetation geonet. It has a uh, double-sided concave and convex structure, you can see over here in this figure, uh, which can closely combine the plant root system with the soil and actually form a stable ecosystem with the geonet. And uh, these are actually one of the project that you make use of this uh, system. And uh, this is a, a high-speed train, uh, actually bullet train uh, project. Uh, they, they use that to protect the stock. This is another uh, new product. It's called high-strength knitted polyester drill grid. This one actually was the one that was used in the hydro uh, electric dam that I showed just now. Uh, it's got very high tensile strength, uh, different kind of uh, strength level up to 1800 kilonewton per meter. And it has low uh, creep performance, uh, cost effective, effective, and then it has high nodal uh, strength. Uh, uh, it's got very nice, uh, excellent uh, durability as well. And uh, the third product is a so called high strength thermally welded geocell. Uh, geocell has been used quite extensively in China right now uh, in, in recent years uh, for different kind of purposes, for example, for slope protection and also for foundation treatment. And also, let me put it this way, uh, and for these, uh, these increased bearing capacity of the foundation subsoil and so on and so forth, particularly for road application or for uh, airport and so on. And uh, this this high strength molecular geo cell has, has high tensile strength, uh, it's low interrogation and it can stretch freely. This is the, another uh, product, uh, it's called one way drainage composite geo uh, membrane. Uh, it's got a unique structure, uh, it's a multi, it has a multi layer composite structure, you can see from here. Uh, it uh, includes different uh, layers. Uh, its function includes water uh, collection. I mean, you can uh, you can collect water uh, for drainage, and also it can work as uh, seepage control, or seepage prevention, and it can also reinforce the uh, subsoil as well. <clears throat> In terms of education, uh, uh, I would like to point out that in early in 2016, the educating the educators came to China uh, and it was held in uh, August, 2016. In this event, over 70 participants from more than 30 colleges and institutes uh, attended the training. And I think it's very, it was very successful. Uh, China also have uh, tried to actually promote this uh, geosynthetic from the undergraduate and graduate levels. Uh, in, in many, in some Chinese universities, right now, my incomplete statistics says about uh, 10 universities in China, 
we have selective courses on geosynthetics in their applications. Uh, we actually published two textbooks, one for undergraduate and the other one for graduate students in 2021 and 2022, respectively. This one is for graduate students, and this one is for undergraduate students. They were both named geosynthetics, but they have different kinds of uh, complexity. Uh, at least more than, and if you take a look at the uh, master and doctoral thesis uh, by the Chinese students, uh, you can see that at least more than 500 doctoral and master thesis will focus on geosynthetics and their applications since two, year 2000. CTIG uh, has also organized uh, seven series of short courses since 2016. These short courses cover different aspects of geosynthetics in the application. So far, uh, more than 700 professionals participated in the short courses. Now let's move on to the uh, last part of my presentation, uh, which is the challenges and the uh, outlook. Yeah. Uh, I think first of all, uh, before we talk about challenges, we also also take a look at the uh, opportunity in China right now. Uh, if you recall, uh, at the beginning of this lecture, I gave you basically the, uh, the background of the development in China. You can see that the, uh, the, the scale of uh, application, the possible scale of application in different sectors in uh, transportation, or the conservancy in hydropower and also high environmental in, uh, protection are huge. And this kind of application was actually driven by another force, which is this, uh, this kind of climate change. Uh, China has actually pledged to attain peak carbon emission by 2030 and carbon neutral by 2060. This actually provides a great opportunity for the application of geosynthetics in various sectors. Of course, we are also facing some challenges. Uh, well, first of all, we are facing some uh, challenges on the product itself. We have varying product qualities by different manufacturers uh, uh, in, in, in mainland China. And among these uh, different manufacturers and providers of geosynthetics, uh, there is some uh, severe and sometimes some unfair competitions among and sometimes this kind of competition is quite severe. And there's also uh, a, a, the issue of uh, building management. We, we should uh, try to strengthen this uh, in order to, uh, to uh, promote the, the, the market. Uh, and then uh, for the new products of geosynthetics, right now research and development uh, has not met the market demand. And we do not have uh, sufficient participation in the international exchanges in China right now. So uh, I think uh, China's geosynthetic industry will increase its efforts in reducing carbon emission and regulating the market and strengthening the protection of intellectual properties and then strengthening international exchanges to promote the healthy and high quality development of geosynthetic industry. I think this is the end of my uh, talk. Uh, thank you very much. I think I'm ready for some questions. Thank you. Thank you, Wabi. That, that was just fabulous hearing all about developments in China and, and the history of geosynthetics in China going back to the 1980s, which is really great to hear. Uh, for everyone listening, you can put questions to Wabi using the Q&A function. So please use the Q&A function. You'll see it at the bottom of your screen. You can just type in a question um, uh, and we will we, we will pick those up. So let's have your questions and, and we'll have that discussion. But perhaps I, I can just start off maybe, Huawei. Yes. Um, so much happening. I thought it was great you were talking about um, the end there, saying how much it was important that you have international exchanges and yeah. taking it right back to the 1980s, you were saying there were... Chinese delegates at the at the very early international yeah. conferences on geosynthetics. We just had a conference in Rome. Yeah. Do you want to say a bit about that? Because there was a really large and significant Chinese delegation that came to the ICG in Rome in September, and you were there. You were, you were leading that delegation. Can you tell us a bit about how that how that went? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. 
uh, that's uh, yeah, uh, in uh, in this uh, last conference, uh, ICG trap ICG in Rome, uh, uh, CTIG and CCIGS organized a delegate of about actually I think sixty to eighty. Uh, we didn't actually count, but I think at, at most sixty uh, representative uh, from different sectors in in China to attend the conference. And actually, we also have first of all. Uh, quite a few uh, presentations on the uh, research and also applications of your study in China. And then we also organize a, a session specifically on the uh, Chinese uh, industry. Uh, and we were able to uh, uh, have, I think about more than 100 attendees from this uh, session as well. And uh, the, 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 this, is, this was a very uh, successful uh, event for us, for, for the Chinese community, community I think. Uh, and. Uh, during the uh, event, we have a good uh, uh, discussion of these uh, collaboration possibilities uh, between China and, or, or, and, and the uh, international communities, particularly uh, how to improve this, uh, the Chinese uh, involvement in these uh, in IGS. Uh, and uh, overall, it was quite, quite good. Thank you, John. Thanks, Wabe. And a couple of questions um, coming in now. So uh, I'll, I'll take the first one. Tom Sangster. Thank you, Tom, for your question. Tom says, thanks, Wabe, for a really interesting and impressive presentation. Can you show us again some of the early slides that you have about the, um, I think, output data in tons and square meters? The scale is impressive, and I'd really like to be sure that I understood it correctly. So Tom's interested okay. in seeing again those early slides about um, okay. Let me see. Knowledge. I, I have them. Let me. I have them. Let me go back. Yeah. Yeah. The, the scale. The, the number is right. Uh, the scale is really uh, impressive. I, I, even I was impressed when I was impressed when I, uh, I saw the numbers. But they, that was the ex exactly the kind of scale that we are looking at over there, over here in China. I think over here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your textile, 1.5 million tons. Um, and your membrane, 1.2 million tons. And your grid, about uh, uh, 0.8 million tons. And that was in, 19, in 2022. I believe, we believe that in 2023, this number could increase. Uh, we, to, we, are, we are going to give, have a number, I think, uh, next year. Uh, so uh, at the time, we'll see. But uh, definitely, it's going to be like that. You can see uh, from this figure over here as well, I agree. If you take, take a look at this figure, uh, except in the, these are actually affected by the, uh, the, the pandemic. Uh, if you take a look at uh, this number, they are basically consistent uh, and, and somehow similar to this. Okay. Thanks, Wabe. So yeah. um, another question uh, here from Peter Davies. And Peter's yeah. in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And, and his question is, um, uh, this is perhaps a slightly controversial yeah. one. How, how does the Chinese government view geosynthetic imports from other countries? Um, is free tra trade allowed or are there any protective import tariffs? So the question is about how... Um, how imports from other countries can enter the Chinese market? As far as I know, there's no. Uh, as far as I know, there's no restriction on that. Uh, as long as you have, I, I believe the, these uh, products of the synthetics is also within the agreement. If you have this uh, trade agreement with, uh, if a specific country has some trade agreement with China, then uh, there's not be any uh, obstacle or something like that uh, for to to enter China to, to Chinese market. Uh, that's all I know. But what I can tell you is that if you take a look at the scale over here, we have this, these are the scale of production that we have in China. And then uh, the, the, the scale is already quite very large. And then uh, if a product would like to have a good portion here in China, then it should be very competitive here. And actually for the, uh, for these, let me say international um, manufacturing firms, Usually they set up some kind of factories in China and actually manufacture the geogrids or the, the, the geotextile products or geosynthetic products in China. For example, Tensa. Uh, actually the factory of Tensa is in Wuhan. 
And uh, I believe McFerry also has a product, has a factory in, in Changsha as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I answer the question, but then uh, this all I, can, or I know, I believe there's no uh, very uh, specific restriction on this issue. Thank you. And just, a, just another question from Tom, who asked the question yeah. earlier. He says, can I, can, could, could you show the next slide again as well? So what's the next slide after this one? Could you show that again? Yeah, yeah. Production lines, yeah. OK. So the production line basically means that uh, these are the, the, the main production lines uh, of the Chinese uh, manufacturers. Uh, these are the number. And they, I have to say they're actually uh, incomplete uh, statistics. statistics. These are the lines that we, the, this, the number that we calculate over here, they are all members of CTAG. And we have some uh, manufacturing firms, they are still not the members of CTAG. Thanks. A uh, question from Alicia Zhu, mm -hmm. okay. uh, who says she's very impressed by the presentation. On mm -hmm. page 55, you uh -huh. have a picture showing HDPE, uh -huh. high density PE GMB. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she asks, what's the potential of total PE demand in China? By which she means including LLDPE, linear low density PE, and uh -huh. LDPE, low density PE. Sorry, a lot of. A lot of <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Uh, uh, let what's, me... what's the percentage of the LLDP demand? I think what you, I cannot give you a, a, a exact number. What I can tell you is actually here. Uh, you can see that actually major membranes, as far as I know, most of the geo membranes are either SDP or LPE. Uh, so uh, if you take a look at that, then you can you, you have some idea. Geo grades are also mainly uh, PE, I mean, SDP mostly actually. actually. Uh, so if you take a look at this number, you, you, you have some idea about this uh, demand of these uh, PE products uh, or raw materials in China. Thank you. Um, thanks, Wabe. And a question from um, Jakezi uh, Onyekwena. Mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced the name right, though I didn't. Says, thanks, Professor Liu, for your wonderful presentation and significant contributions to the design and application of geosynthetics. I'd like to know how you see the future development and innovation of geosynthetics in China, especially in terms of environmental protection, sustainability, and quality standards. What are the best practices and lessons learned from your experience in working on geosynthetic projects? So environmental protection, sustainability, and quality standards, uh, key, key issue. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think uh, that's actually one of the the I I I believe all the audience in this uh, seminar right now uh, know that this uh, they want that, uh, this environmental protection or sustainability and process sustainability is one of the most important or most uh, the largest uh, advantages of uh, synthetic products uh, or in applications and. I believe, uh, not just in China, I believe this synthetic product will, 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 will have its momentum in different applications, particularly uh, in, under this, uh, you know, right now, uh, the climate change environment. Uh, climate change actually changes a lot of things. And uh, people from different, and also governments from different parts of the world are very concerned with this uh, climate change and their impacts. And then this, uh, by and by, at least in China right now, uh, this is already an issue, and it's already, it's already uh, happening that uh, more and more people are going are coming to geotextile or geosynthetic products for their uh, engineering projects. And uh, we have, we are, uh, in China, I think uh, it's not actually active right now yet, but then they were talking about some carbon market. And when the carbon market is actually uh, on, uh, I think the application uh, of geosynthetic products in engineering project will also increase. And just in China, right now, al although there's the projects uh, in some parts of China, but not so many, I mean, because of this, uh, you know, we have already built a lot of roads and highways and railways and so like that. However, in some parts of China, for example, in the Western part of China, there's still a lot of engineering project projects to be done. Uh, so I, I think the demand for your synthetic uh, will actually increase over the years. Thank you. 
Thanks, Rabe. And can, you, you were talking quite a bit about standards earlier and yeah. the standards in China. Yeah. Uh, but then you talked about a project in, I think it was Montenegro in, in yeah. Europe. Yeah. Um, so I guess there's an interesting question about how is it, how do Chinese manufacturers and installers, how do they find working in other markets? So the standards in Europe and elsewhere, how much are they aligned with those standards that, that they're used to using in, in the Chinese market? Uh, first of all, I think the uh, for for product standard, uh, we actually quite uh, quite close. I mean, if you take a look at the standard of products uh, in China, uh, you can see that they are actually quite close to uh, those in Europe or in the North America. And uh, for the application, I mean, for the, for example, design construction guides or, or, or standards, uh, the Chinese standards are very similar to the European standards. Uh, we are trying to right now actually uh, try to somehow uh, improve the capacity of the Chinese manufacturers and also design firms uh, so that they can be very familiar with the, for example, uh, European standards and they can design and construct the, the structure over there as well. Yeah. Uh, the, the, this was a, this, this project over here, it was a very unique project. It was actually uh, an, uh, you, you can see the project scale is quite large as well, right? And then this Chinese firm, uh, I, I think it's a POSD. Uh, let me let me go back later on to 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 the, to the firm's name. Uh, I think they win. Uh, they won the the, the 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 contract and was able to uh, implement it all according, according to the European standard, and everything looks quite well. Yeah. No. Thanks. And you were also talking about earlier about the. The level of interest in China for more international exchanges. Yeah. yeah. Could could you expand on that and um, what you think will be most beneficial in terms of those international exchanges? I think first of all, we uh, we would like to first of all let the, uh, the the world, I mean the other countries, to have some idea about the uh, geosynthetic industry and the, our activities here uh, in China. And that's the first thing. I mean, also to give them the idea of the opportunity of geosynthetic uh, product and application. I think this also relates to the question was asked just now regarding the uh, product entering China. And so uh, this is one of the reasons why we'd like to, uh, you know, uh, have more collaboration with the uh, international community. And also, uh, in uh, we also like to make sure that uh, you know, right now. Uh, in terms of, in, in the civil engineering area, we have quite a lot of uh, construction and design term, uh, firms, and they are actually uh, having a lot of projects outside China. Uh, and because of this Belt and, Belt and Road Initiative, I think you know that. And then uh, they are also encountering a lot of pro uh, projects uh, that could or, that, or will involve just in And and we have to make sure that they will be able to do the work correctly and so uh, for, to make, make sure that that, that that can be done. Uh, of course, we need to uh, promote the international uh, communication and to get our people here in China more involved with the international uh, community, uh, particularly through IGS. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. So I just want to ask you a question, Huawei, about um, the role of the IGS. Um, yeah. uh, wh where do you see it from your perspective and from the, the perspective of your your colleagues in China? You know, What would you like to see the IGS doing more of or doing differently? I think IGS uh, right now is uh, actually uh, doing quite well. I mean, it's also devel developing quite fast. Uh, if you if if you uh, ask me, I think uh, I would like to see more involvement of these uh, people from, I mean, let me put it this way, developing countries to uh, be involved in the IGS. Uh, I think uh, right now, uh, if you take a look at China, uh, India, and also Africa, I think uh, you you can see that uh, the project opportunities for geosynthetics. Uh, mostly in within these countries. Uh, however, the uh, I think I don't think we have many members uh, from these countries in IGS right now. So 
uh, if I think what IJS can do is to get more people uh, from these country, countries to get involved and also to uh, who's to, to join IJS, that would be best. Yeah, John. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's no doubt the opportunity is really massive in the developing countries. There's probably about 40%, 40 percent, 40 yeah. percent of our members are in what we would call non high income countries. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 that's a kind of proxy for developing countries. So we we're about 40 percent in those countries that aren't already high income mm -hmm. countries. But we could always do with more. We certainly welcome yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. more members in those countries. Just, I'll take one last question here from uh, Hui Tao Kui. Again, I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Uh, uh, Hui Tao says, thank you, Professor Liu, for your speech and for your contribution to the industry. China's made substantial advancements in the innovation and quality of geosynthetics materials. Chinese geosynthetics materials are renowned for excellent value and for money. What are your thoughts on the innovation in Chinese geosynthetics materials? and the potential for developing products and brands that have a more significant impact? I think, first of all, of course, quality is the first thing. Uh, that actually, Haito already mentioned that, 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 that we already uh, are paying a lot of attention to that. And the, I think the more important issue right now is to uh, be more uh, sustainable. That's what I would like to say. Is to try, try to see, because right now, uh, this, uh, as I was saying just now, sustainability is the biggest issue right now. Uh, for and if you can have uh, this product that is more sustainable, and of course, I believe uh, we, uh, you will have more uh, applications and more impacts. Thank you. So we're coming to the end of the session. So it just. Um, uh, uh, just surprised me now to say thank you, Huabe, for your yeah, okay. contribution. Thank you to everybody that, that listened. Thanks for the many questions. There's some great questions there, very interactive. Just a reminder, we're going, we have recorded this session and the recording will be made available subsequently. So if you want to watch this again, you will be able to see it again on our website and we'll tell you all about that through our newsletters and emails. And you'll also be able to share it with your colleagues. We'd like as many people as possible. To see, these, um, to see these webinars this week. Uh, don't forget, we've got two more sessions today at 12 noon Central European time. That's 11 a.m. Universal time. You can join our third Ask the Officers session with Dr. Laura Carboni, who is the IGS secretary. That's today. And immediately afterwards at 12 noon Universal time, we welcome Jabalidi Masiza, who's going to be presenting case studies and opportunities in Africa. So a focus there on the developing countries that, that Huawei just mentioned. And we look forward to seeing you at both of those. You can use the same Zoom link again. So this link will work for both of those sessions today. And don't forget, you can also register for all the remaining sessions running for the rest of this week. That's Thursday and Friday. We've got four more sessions, two on Thursday and two on Friday. So please join us also for those. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, goodbye for now. Thank you.